Uh, right, well, uh, good morning everyone. Um, and thank you, Annika, for the uh, introduction. Um, yes, uh, as Annika said, I'm Richard Parsons. I work in the Department for Environment, Food and Rural Affairs in the UK, uh, and specifically in the Food Policy Unit, uh, looking at uh, food industry, competitiveness and growth issues. Um, and my, uh, my days are taken up uh, these days with the development of uh, our 25-year food and farming plan, um, which is a, um, a key commitment for uh, the new government, uh, which we said came in May this year. Uh, so what I wanted to do today was give you, uh, first, first off, uh, a bit of context about the UK food and farming sector. Um, then I'll run through the kind of emerging uh, themes from the food and farming plan that we're, we're currently developing. Um, touch on a bit of the process that we've, uh, we've used as we've developed the plan. And then, um, given the, the focus of today, uh, I wanted to, to uh, delve a little bit more in detail about the, uh, the work to boost uh, innovation and R&D. Um, so first off, the, um, the UK agri-food sector. Well, uh, it's a big part of the UK economy. It contributes um, over £100 billion uh, to the economy. Um, that figure actually has just been revised. I think it's more like £110 billion now. Um, and of that, um, agriculture is a smaller, smaller part uh, probably around 10 billion. Um, the whole food chain employs around uh, 3.8 million people. So that's around one in, eight, one in eight in the workforce work in the food chain. Um, and food manufacturing is actually our biggest manufacturing sector. So it contributes around uh, 26 and a half billion pounds uh, to GDP, so that's nearly 2% of the total. Um, and as a sector, as a manufacturing sector, it's bigger than um, cars and aerospace combined, which is, which is actually quite surprising and um, not something that, that people automatically think of when they think of manufacturing sectors. They usually think of nice, big, shiny uh, machines. Um, but we, we shouldn't forget agriculture. Agriculture <coughs> has big impacts in the UK. It accounts for 71% of the land use um, and it helps shape the landscape um, and uh, that we all value and obviously has big impacts on <coughs> soils, water, air quality, biodiversity, <coughs> delivery of eco ecosystem services. So this chart just gives you um, a flavour of the relative size of the different parts of the, of the, um, the UK food chain. Um, as you can see, manufacturing is a, a, a sizeable <coughs> chunk of it. But the two biggest uh, elements are uh, retailing and catering. And in terms of uh, employment, uh, those are far, by far the biggest uh, sectors, both employing uh, well over a million people um, each. And we shouldn't forget uh, the wholesaling element as well, uh, which, is, which is significant. But in terms of government's focus, I think it's fair to say that our, our, our focus has really been on agriculture and manufacturing. Agriculture because we have um, such a, um, uh, a history of, of government intervention uh, in agriculture, uh, including through the Common Agricultural Policy um, and also the, the, wider, um, the wider impacts that it has on, uh, on things like our, our environment, etc. Uh, but also on, on food manufacturing. Um, and both, both of these sectors um, are highly fragmented. Over 90% of them would be made up of uh, small uh, small and medium-sized enterprises, small businesses, and in the farming sector particularly, uh, those are micro-businesses. So I think probably around 50% of farms are either uh, one or two people operated. Um, 
but fair to say also that in the manufacturing sector we have this, this large chunk of, of, of small businesses but some very big ones as well, some big multinationals uh, who are located uh, in the UK. Now when the com current government came in, uh, they have uh, a big focus on uh, productivity and boosting pro productivity um, across the economy and uh, uh, the food chain is, is no exception to that. Um, so I just thought it'd be useful just to, to identify kind of where we are in terms of productivity um, and particular comparison to our, our competitors. Um, so this is, this is farming. Uh, the red line is the UK. Uh, our Irish colleague will please to see the, the uh, dotted <laughs> line <laughs> up there. So the yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, but as you can see, we, we are performing well below uh, a lot of our, our competitors. Um, so, and, and research has shown that um, in order to, to boost productivity, the key areas to focus on are R&D and innovation, education and skills, and, uh, and business practices. Productivity in the food sector, um, a little bit different. Um, we are broadly competitive uh, with our international competitors, but um, and and also we've we've done um, not too bad over particularly over the last uh, um, five seven years uh, since the the two thousand and eight uh, downturn. Um, but we are starting to to level off, starting to flatline, um, and it's worth noting that. The manufacturing sector in particular is exposed to international competition and so you know if we don't get the business environment right and and that's around skills it's around r d it's around support for exports etc then there is a chance and a risk that that manufacturing capacity will move elsewhere where those where those um those aspects are, are more favorable so we need to maintain the focus uh, in those areas. Um, and it's also worth noting that uh, food manufacturing does less well compared to other manufacturing sectors. So again, another, uh, another reason for, for looking in more detail in that area. Um, so, so our focus here, again, R&D, innovation, skills and, and exports. Right, so... Uh, Coming on to our 25-year food and farming plan. Um, so when the government came in, it committed to work with the food and farming industry to develop a 25-year plan to grow more, buy more, and sell more British food. That's, the, that's our task, uh, and that's what we're in engaged with um, at the moment. Um, I think I should point out at this stage that you know, we have had food strategies in the past, We've had a number of food strategies. I've worked on a few of them. Um, this is not a, an all-encompassing uh, food strategy. So it doesn't uh, purport to get into the environmental sustainability issues, the health, diet, nutrition issues, um, the changing consumer behaviour type issues. It's an economic plan and with a strong focus on productivity um, and growth. But having said that, given the long-term nature of it, it needs to be underpinned by long-term environmental sustainability. And clearly there will be um, economic and environmental uh, efficiency aspects, you know, win-wins that we'll need to pick up uh, as part of that. Um, separately and in parallel and and uh, we're working with that team as well. We'll, uh, they're developing a 25-year environment plan. So that will pick up the key issues around uh, water, soils, biodiversity, those sort of issues. That won't be in our plan. Um, and as I mentioned on uh, resource efficiency, we're also pursuing a new uh, long-term voluntary agreement on resource efficiency, which will look to to build on the success we've had so far around reducing waste, but it will also get into reducing uh, carbon emissions uh, and look at water efficiency as well. Um, another th thing to say here is that 
uh, our ministers are very keen that this is an industry-led um, process. So whilst we in, in DEFRA are actually holding the pen and writing it, we are very clear that the actions um, um, need to be driven by, by industry. For it, to, for it to work, they need to be taken up and, and, um, and workable uh, and practical for, for industry. Um, it is a, a, a kind of UK plan, but actually most of the, the actions will be focused uh, on, on England because the, the policy in the different countries, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, is actually devolved to, to those governments. Okay, so um, in preparing the, um, in developing the plan, uh, we've put together this long-term vision. So this is this is where we want to be at the end of the uh, the en end of the process, the end of the 25 years. So you can see that there's there's four uh, four key kind of uh, themes here. Um, at the top there, you've got world-leading brands. So this includes. Um, um, boosting exports, it's um, boosting the, the British <coughs> food brand uh, around the world and also, and also at home. Um, and there's, a, there's an aspect around um, government leading by example. So where government buys food, uh, for example, schools, hospitals, prisons, that sort of thing, then it should be, uh, should be buying British uh, food. Um, there's a the theme around resilience uh, and environment. So we're looking for a, a, a self-reliant um, sector, self-reliant industry with strong, strong industry le leadership. So that picks up that kind of fragment, fragmentation point. It's currently a very fragmented uh, picture. Uh, resilience against uh, pests and disease, against um, uh, climate risk, uh, market volatility risk, those sort of things, and also delivering those, those big environmental benefits that it, that it can deliver. Um, consumer focused with maximum uh, integrity, so um, being responsive to consumer demand, um, and we can build the link to the healthy diets here. Um, having the consumer confidence, so through that, that um, supply chain integrity, and we saw uh, what happened with the recent, a uh, well, couple of years, two, two years ago, the horse meat um, scandal. So, you know, consumer confidence can just die very, very rapidly. Um, and obviously contributing to our, to our own food security. And then the, another key area, uh, driving growth through higher productivity. And here we've got the, the R&D and innovation aspect. Um, a highly skilled workforce and importantly attracting new talent into the into the sector and um, uh, unblocking barriers so to enable uh, businesses and uh, and entrepreneurs to 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 succeed so that's our, our kind of long term vision of, of where we want to get to in the plan itself that translates into uh, these broadly similar areas um, and I'll go through uh, the, the kind of key action action areas. Um, so on exports and branding uh, we've got building the brand and there's, um, there's work already underway here um, to develop the, uh, the British food brand. Um, the Secretary, our Secretary of State has designated 2016 as the year of British food, so there'll be an ongoing campaign throughout the year to, to promote um, and celebrate British food. And she signed up, I think, 40 uh, what she's calling pioneers, and these are uh, big figures in the and well-known figures in the, in the food industry, chefs, um, it could be business owners, those sort of things, and they are going to help uh, drive this 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 message. Um, boosting exports, uh, I'll touch on, on this in a moment, but um, there's a uh, refreshed action plan there. Um, and working with our agency, the UK Trade and Investment, both to provide export support and also um, attract foreign direct investment into the UK. 
Um, and then uh, the procurement aspect, public procurement aspect as well. Uh, on the productivity uh, section there, uh, you've got leading the world in, in R&D. So, uh, and I'll, I'll touch on this in a lot more detail later, so I'll skip over that for the moment. Um, skills and apprenticeships, um, very important. Um, and this is, as I said, around um, making sure that we've got uh, the right skills, um, but also that we've got uh, the right people coming into the, into the industry. Uh, removing barriers to growth, so that's cutting red tape, uh, broadband co connectivity, um, looking at any particular planning issues. And then if we look down at supply chain resi resilience, there's actions around, and these, these are quite new areas for us actually, and quite interesting areas. Um, so there's, there's something around supply, better supp supply chain integration. Um, currently with the uh, fragmented nature of the, uh, uh, the industry, it's difficult to get those messages up and down the food chain. So, so business models that uh, either promote integration or where actors along the food chain work more collaboratively um, we'll look, be looking at, at, at those. Um, also, in, ti terms of, in times of crisis, it's generally those at the bottom of the food chain who are hit, hit worse, as we've seen in the recent dairy crisis and milk prices. Um, so it's, it's what can we do to, to help uh, um, all, all people throughout the food chain uh, work more collaboratively uh, t uh, together. Um, and we'll be showcasing uh, particular business models that, that we think are, are, are kind of best practice in this area. Um, and also looking at uh, risk management. So um, looking at fu futures markets, for example, or innovative uh, insurance products, those sort of things. And there's a link to the, the environment plan here. And then lastly, on the consumer confidence side, very much around um, uh, maximising food safety and integrity uh, and maintaining uh, uh, our food security through diverse sources of supply. So those are the, the main areas of focus. I'll, I'll go into a little bit more detail about some of them. Um, so exports, um, we're already doing quite well, but we want to be better. Um, and in particular, we want to raise our level of ambition. So there will be, uh, there is currently a uh, food, food and drink export action plan which is being uh, refreshed and will be published in the, in the new year. Um, and there will be actions within that to look at export support, uh, look at opening new market opportunities for UK businesses, promoting the excellence of, um, of uh, food and drink. Um, and as I said about the, the raising am level of ambition, currently <coughs> only 20% of, of companies export. So we're looking to increase that um, and uh, uh, sort of make them aware of what the opportunities are. Skills and apprenticeships. Well, there's a, there is a big demographic challenge for the industry looming. Um, the ageing workforce, um, and the Food and Drink um, Trade Association estimates that they're going to have over 100,000 vacancies between now and 2022. Um, and a lot of those will be in the uh, technical engineering type uh, a areas. But there's also a perception challenge around the food industry. Um, you know. And this goes right through from schools through to parents to careers advisors and that sort of thing. Food industry is seen as, um, you know, it's not seen as an exciting, dynamic, um, innovative place to, to go and work. It's seen as old fashioned, dirty, that sort of thing. It's, you know, um, teachers will say to you, if you don't do well at school, you'll end up in the, in the food factory. <laughs> um, we want to change that perception. Um, so, and, and showcase the best, you know, the, the most innovative um, careers uh, that the, the industry can offer. 
We've also got a, um, uh, a commitment to treble the number of, of apprenticeships in, um, in food and drink and food and farming by 2020. Um, food industry in particular uh, is not performing well. Less than 1% of its workforce are apprentices. That's well below uh, the industry average. Um, 3% is seemed as, as good. So there's, there's work to do there. Um, and there's a range of joint industry and government action that can, can help here. Uh, we've recently introduced an, a, a levy uh, on, uh, on businesses. This is, their businesses be levied over a certain size, will be levied, um, or, or taxed essentially, um, 0.5 of their payroll. And they'll be able to get that money back if they spend it on training for apprentices. And that, that is going to come in in 2017. Um, there's a National Apprenticeship Service that uh, helps people take on apprentices. Um, there's, there's new apprentices, apprenticeship frameworks that are being designed by industry so that they are relevant for the industry. We need to do more to promote the STEM subjects, so science, technology, uh, engineering, maths in, in schools and we need this new focus on, on careers. So world leading uh, innovation and, and, res uh, and research. Uh, we've already got a uh, highly innovative uh, food industry. Um, they, they suggest that 10,000 or more innovative new products are, are developed each year. Having tasted some of them, you th you're wondering whether some of them should have been uh, invented in the first place. But um, uh, yes, or striving to be innovative. In innovative. But there are long-term challenges that we need to focus on. Um, the health issue. We need to reformulate foods so they're lower in sugar, fat, uh, salt. Uh, waste uh, is a big issue. So we're looking at things around uh, extending shelf life um, and also adding value to, to waste streams and, and using waste products. Obviously energy and water efficiency, packaging, manufacturing of the future, um, more automation, uh, clearly more use of robotics, um, but also more flexibility in that manufacturing so that it can be switched quickly to, to develop to, um, as, as new products come on stream and also around food safety. Um, and we're bringing this, this uh, strong focus on R&D through our agri-tech strategy and through a new food innovation network, which is all about joining up um, the R&D uh, landscape. And I'll, I'll speak a bit more about that in a moment. Um, but I wanted to highlight as well that the link between um, environmental s sustainability and, and boosting productivity. Um, food chain has a big environmental impact, um, but it also has a, a good track record of, of success in terms of um, reducing um, emissions, water use, uh, waste in particular. Um, but there is, there is um, scope to do more and deliver more environmental benefits um, and at the same time reduce costs. So that will be a key part of our productivity uh, agenda. And of course, as I said before, we need to maintain the consumer confidence that underpins the whole food chain. And if you lose that, then you've lost everything. Um, but it's important here and in our export markets, um, increasingly so. Um, so work here in terms of both uh, quality and safety of food, uh, authenticity and traceability, um, information for consumers through labelling, etc., and high animal welfare standards. Um, and these are particularly valued um, by a kind of uh, the countries that we export to. So that's the um, ambitious task that we've got, to turn Britain into one of the world's greatest food nations. Um, and these are examples of the, the campaign that I was talking to you about earlier. Um, but the, the end goal is that we are supporting and promoting um, an innovative, resilient, competitive and consumer-focused 
uh, food and farming sector. So I wanted to say a little bit more about, um, or a little bit about what we've done to date, what the process has been in terms of developing this strategy. Um, so the government came in in, in May. Um, through May and June, uh, ministers had one-to-one -one <coughs> meetings with key stakeholders, so that may, whether that's trade associations or uh, uh, food and farming businesses, to get a feel for where, where um, their priorities lay. Um, we then had a big launch event in July. Uh, over 100 um, of the key stakeholders came through, uh, took part in, in a kind of workshop sessions around um, what, what should be in the plan. Uh, separate farming focused uh, event in August. And then through September, we've held uh, regional stakeholders events um, around the country. Um, so enabling people across the country to, to feed into the, in, into the plan, feed their ideas in. And only a couple of weeks ago, we went uh, to um, near Manchester and um, held an event for the next generation. So these were people in the food industry who are under 30, food and farming industry under 30, who were still gonna, will still be in the industry, we hope, in 25 years' time. So it's getting their perspectives as well. And that was really quite exciting, actually. You're getting really fresh perspectives. You know, you're getting um, uh, uh, comments like, well, I, I wish they'd just abolished the cap, for example. Abolish the common agricultural policy. It's, you know, people are just farming for, <coughs> for subsidies now. I don't want that. I want to have the freedom to do what I want to do. Um, so it's quite quite a different perspective from that, set, that group of, of, of stakeholders. Um, so looking at next steps, well, we're in the process now of um, developing and agreeing the actions that will go into the plan. Um, we'll need to go through a process of agreeing the, uh, the plan with other government departments. So this will bring in, for example, the, the, the key departments who lead on um, innovation on skills, on health, for example. Um, and then we're planning February, March, I think, time for our, our publication. So quite a quick process, um, uh, which I think is th similar to the, the, um, the Swedish example. But clearly, still a lot of work to be done. OK, so... Um, that was a kind of broad overview of our plan. Yeah, so I wanted to have a quick look at, at R&D and innovation in a bit more detail on what we're doing there. So that's our, our vision for uh, um, agri-food innovation, driving productivity, enabling new markets, um, and, uh, and becoming more resilient, all based on high quality science. Um, you're probably well aware of the, the kind of global challenges that we, we all face with growing population, limited land availability, um, urbanisation, um, and pressure on, on, on resources. Um, so that's, those are the kind of global, global challenge. But that presents opportunities. Um, <coughs> And these are what we want to focus on. So there'll be, uh, you know, growing demand for food, feed, fibre, and fuel for a for this growing population. Um, there'll be a need for increasing agricultural productivity and quality, for example, through increased yields. Um, there's a there's a big area of focus around uh, technology, so uh, precision precision agriculture, for example, helping to reduce uh, reduce inputs. Um, genetics and uh, increasingly the use of, of data and big data. Um, there's a, a whole uh, area around uh, health and diet and developing products that are uh, more nutritious and, and healthy. Um, and also uh, there's opportunities around um, exporting our expertise and, and technology, whether that's precision agriculture, crop protection, um, pharmaceuticals, for animal 
pharmaceuticals or animal breeding, those sort of things, there's opportunities there. But there are also um, big challenges to delivering this, uh, this innovation uh, that we need to, um, un, uh, need to overcome. Um, so there are challenges around uh, the current complexity of, this, of the supply chain, which makes collaboration and exchange of knowledge uh, much more difficult. There's also complexity in the, in the research base. So it's difficult for industry to, to work out um, who does what and to access the expertise um, they need and also to influence the research, so to say what the, what the priorities uh, should be. Um, there's issue, issues around the kind of long time scales between the, the lab-based research and, and getting it out into the, to the fields and factories. <coughs> um, and then there's, there's um, issues around uh, investment, so um, uncertainty whether research uh, will pay off ultimately. Um, so it's kind of risky investment, particularly for small, for small companies. Um, and um, issues around whether you can capture the full returns of, of an investment, particularly if the, if the benefits are for kind of more for wider society. Um, there's issues around regulation, which needs to be proportionate and risk-based to, to support innovation. Um, issues around uh, access to finance, I, I guess, for small companies. And an important one, actually, there's, there's an issues around public acceptability um, to new technology. Um, so th those all need to be uh, addressed. What we're doing uh, already, we've got an agri-tech strategy, um, and this, uh, this is all about improving the translation of research into, into practice. So we've got, uh, we've got projects running, 70 million pounds worth of projects. We've got new centres for innovation, uh, including the, f the first one that came online recently, which is for informatics, uh, so big data. Um, so there's a kind of s a centre of excellence there. Um, it also has put together a leadership council, and that provides the kind of leadership for the sector. Um, there's a skills focus, um, and there's it's all about bringing um, uh, research and business together. I'll skip over that. So just looking forward um, to kind of the, 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 the research priorities as, as, as we go forward. Um, we need stuff around resilience of the food and farming system. So that looks at kind of uh, climate challenges and pests and diseases. Um, improving productivity, so looking at new technology uh, uh, and um, efficiencies. Uh, reducing waste, etc. Um, enhancing uh, food quality uh, uh, and manufacturing, um, and also the whole health and, and nutrition agenda as well. Um, and underpinning those, you've got cross-cutting technologies like uh, like data. Uh, you've got environmental resilience and as I said, the important issues around attitudes and public attitudes and acceptance to, to new technology as it comes on stream. Okay, so just finally, last slide. Uh, um, so to support our, our plan, what are we doing? Um, <coughs> well, we, we're bringing together existing research, research uh, activity uh, to enable a, a kind of whole food chain approach. Um, so that agri-tech tra strategy that was published last year, that was very much uh, pre-farm gate focus, so very much farming focus. We want to expand that now to the whole food chain. Um, we want to build on the existing invest invest investments that we've got that supports <coughs> the research base. So these, like these new um, innovation centres, uh, so build on those. Uh, we need to strengthen the connections between industry and, and academia uh, and universities to, to stimulate innovation. Um, and we need to use the um, uh, UK's excellence in, in numerous areas of, of uh, agri-food science to create opportunities for partnership working and also new markets. Um, and this will all be supported by a new food innovation network 
which is um, uh, 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 industry government group with the sole focus of um, bringing together uh, business and and the research community, whether it's funders, universities, um, technology transfer people, all to make it much more joined up than it already is. And that's all I've got to say. So <laughs> thank you for listening. Thank you very much.